Hey there Dev Squad Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 sequencer course. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can bring our sequences to life by taking advantage of lighting inside of Unreal Engine 4. If you go ahead and take a look at the end result on the screen, you're going to be able to see that by the end of this video, you'll be able to use different types of light, manipulate the intensity, color and the location along your tracks. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into Unreal Engine 4. Okay, so now we're inside of Unreal Engine, we can show you how we can use lights inside of our sequencer. Now, in terms of lights, there is a couple of different options that you have. And if you're familiar with Unreal Engine and level design in general, you are going to know some of the different types. What I'm going to do is quickly take a moment to introduce you to some of the different lights that you are going to be using in a standard sequencer sequence. So first and foremost, if we go over to our modes, go to place, lights, and in here, you can see some of the different options that we have. First and foremost, we have our directional light, which is essentially going to be a little bit like the sun. It is going to be coming down from one direction. Next up, you have your point light, which is essentially just going to emit light in a 360 degree radius. And it's going to be the most commonly used type of light that you have in Unreal Engine. If we go ahead and drag one into the scene, you can see exactly what's going to happen. This light is going to emit light from everywhere. The spotlight, which is our next one, is going to be emitting light in a cone. And typically you're going to be using this for things like lighting fixtures, where it's going down into one direction, like there's a little bit of casing or something which is going to be blocking it, like a lampshade, for example. Next up you have your rectangular light, which is going to be a bit like the other two types, but instead of doing 360 or a cone, it is going to have a source which is going to be rectangular, as you can see in this image. So with these different types of lights, essentially all you're doing is having different types of sources. An angled cone based light, a 360 degree point based light and then lastly you have got your rectangular light and then you've also got your skylight which is just going to light up the scene globally. Now we already have one of these in our scene. Now for the purpose of making this video very atmospheric and very easy to see all of these lights and bits that we're doing, what we're going to do is go into our scene and we're actually going to search for our directional light which is going to be our main light source hit delete on that and it's suddenly going to get really dark. What we're now going to do from here is we're going to be taking in a point light and dragging and dropping it into the scene just like this. And with that being done, what we're going to be doing is showing you how you can add it to the sequence. And then once you've added it to the sequence, what we're going to be doing is changing different values. That is the intensity, which is how strong and how bright this light is going to glow. You've then got your color, which is pretty self-explanatory, just the color. And then last but not least, we're going to be showing you how you can do all of this with the movement track. So we're going to be having the color changing, we're going to be having it turning on and off, and it's all going to be moving at the same time. So by the end of this video, you are going to have a complete understanding of how you can really manipulate lights to bring your scenes to life. So if we go ahead and dive into our sequencer, with this point light selected, we can add this to the sequence just like any other actor. Actor 2 sequence, and then we're going to add point light 2, or you can just search it there as well. With this done, what we now have is a couple of tracks by default. Those are our intensity, which like I said, is how bright it's going to glow. And then you've also got your color as well. And the color is broken down into R, G, B, and A. But we're going to be going over all of this as we go into it. So we're going to be plotting all of this lighting information onto here using keyframes, just like we would with anything else. So starting off with the intensity, by default, it's currently set to eight. So what I could do is set this to zero, create a keyframe, and that is actually going to turn that light off. 
and if I wanted to I can make another keyframe with the set to zero and then moving on from there I can then suddenly set this all the way up to something like 50 and really make this bright. For now I'm just going to set this to 15 and all I'm going to do is just very quickly just turn this off and on. So we're going to have the next keyframe being zero and then I'm going to have it going back up to 15, back down to zero. And what I'm essentially trying to recreate here is light flickering. So as you can see there, it very, very quickly flickered there. And it's and it's something similar to what you'd see with like a bulb that's on its way out or, or something like that. And I think little details like this really make or break your cinematics. It really brings them to life. So if we go ahead and start this, you can see there, there was lots of flickering and it looked really, really nice. And when it comes to the intensity track, you are gonna have that with your point light, your spotlight, and your rectangular light as well. So you can play around with that with all of these. Moving on from here, we have our light color. Our light color is pretty straightforward. We've got these four values. Those are red, green, blue, and alpha. So red, green, blue are just colors. That is how much of that color you're gonna be putting into this light. The alpha is essentially going to be the opacity. So if you had this set to zero, even though you've got this color going in, it's not gonna shine any of that color through. So it's definitely worth having that set up to one. And generally with lights, you are gonna have that alpha set up to one the entire time. So what we're gonna do now is take a moment to create a few keyframes using the light color. So what we're gonna do is start off by having it as this white color as you've got here. And as such, I'm going to add a new keyframe with those colors. What I'm then going to be doing is over time, I am going to be changing the colors from this white color to something with a little bit more red in it. And the way I'm gonna do that is by reducing the green and the blue. So it's just the red coming through there. And as you can see, between those two keyframes, it is going to go from one color to another. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And as you can see there, it gets very dramatic when you start throwing in those different colors. The red color sort of represents warnings and it's sort of telling you that something is about to happen. And that's something that I'm about to do is the explosion. Because we've got the particle effect going, I want the flames to really lighten up the scene. And the way we're gonna do this is actually by using a bright orange light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be having this at red, just like it is here. We're gonna be creating a keyframe. And then just as it explodes, that is when we are gonna be changing it to an orange. And the way that we're gonna be changing this to an orange is by, you guessed it, just changing the RGB values. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit of green in there and that is going to give us the orange that we're after. Now what we also have to do there is we need the intensity to go up because the orange isn't going to be as visible. So what we're gonna do is create a keyframe for the intensity just before it explodes. And then when it does explode, create another keyframe and we're going to be setting this up to 50 so it's super super bright super visible and if we go ahead and take a look at this we now have that light going on now once the explosion has finished you are going to want to turn that light off so all we're going to do is create a little keyframe set the intensity to zero and there we have it we have got our really nice little lighting inside of our sequencer. So that is pretty much everything for intensity and light color. The next thing that I'm gonna be moving on to is the transform track, which is basically just going to control the movement. So that is gonna be location, rotation, and the scale. If you want to add a transform track, all you need to do is go to our point light, go to plus track, Go to transform and that is going to create it and then from here we can expand this and we now have access to location rotation and scale just like we did with all of the other items that we've worked with inside the sequencer so what i'm going to do 
is it starts off in this location here. But what I'm going to tell it to do is just move in front of the player as the sequence goes on. So we're going to go to our location. We are going to set it to the location it's at just there. But by the end of our sequence, at the very end here, we are going to tell it to move. And we want this to be right in front of the player. Just like this. So move it along. Move it down. And then with this new information, this is where you want to be creating that keyframe. So use the location to create that keyframe. And if we go back to the start of our sequence, we can see our light is now moving. And if we wanted to, what we can do to really show this off so you can see that light being displayed on the player, what we do is simply just go to our intensity and we're just gonna turn this on. We're gonna set this to 15. So it's visible, but most importantly, what we do need to do is change the color because we don't want it to be orange anymore. So we're going to create a light color track or keyframe rather, and we're going to be setting this to one, one, one. So it's just a solid white, just like that. If we go through, take a look at this. It flashes, it explodes, it comes on, and then it sort of just follows the player through just like that. So hopefully you guys are starting to get a better understanding of how you can use lighting inside of Sequencer to really bring it to life. And if you do some really careful and creative cinematography using lights, you are going to get some amazing results. Anyway guys, that is absolutely everything for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out.